Documentaries are always a major part of the Jameson Dublin International Film Festival and this year was no exception. Now the big uneasy Harry Shearer's documentary was screened earlier in the week and I caught up with the man himself. Someday there's going to be a catastrophic flooding. They never heeded this advice. Congress had sent a clear message. Don't mess with the Corps. Now they're building a multi-billion dollar wall to prevent what they said didn't happen. People didn't have to die. What did you find was the most shocking thing that you uncovered over the course of making the the movie? Uh, uh, You know, uh, there's... Depending on what you knew, uh, uh, there's so much of it that's shocking. I knew most of the story. Uh, what the whistleblower, fabulous woman named Maria Garzino, uh, told was shocking because most of it was new to me, hadn't been reported in the local media. I think to, to, to crystallize it uh, was something that she said to me after the film was made, after it had, had been completed. And uh, she said she was talking to a couple people that she still knew in this agency in New Orleans, the agency that had done all the, the fine work that uh, resulted in the flooding of the city. And uh, she said, with a tone of disbelief, which is pretty hard for her because she's seen a lot of amazing stuff, she said, it just doesn't bother them that people died. There was a lot of repercussions for the people that brought these issues to light. Um, have you yourself found that there's been any repercussions for you personally? Personally, no. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I, and I thought going into it, well, I'm in a pretty advantageous situation. What are they going to do? Say you can't be Mr. Burns anymore? But um, that ignores the fact that the film, uh, I think, was the victim of, so far, some repercussions. Um, in this sense, um, there would have been no need for, you know, a comedy guy to have taken on this this job if the American news media had done their job and told the story. Now, I sort of smartly but also naively thought that timing the initial release of this film to the fifth anniversary of the flooding was result in the media paying attention to this story because they can't help themselves in America. If it's the fifth anniversary of, you know, the opening of a pizza parlor, they're there. And sure enough, they were in New Orleans, and, and sure enough, uh, they ignored this story. And in the postmortems, you know, we realized uh, acknowledging this story is an acknowledgement of their failure and ain't going to do that. Not only are you a filmmaker, but you're a comedy actor and your voice is familiar to so many people around the world because you're part of The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. What is it like to be part of such a huge, big cult phenomenon? It's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, you get into show business to, to uh, reach audiences and make people laugh if you're in the comedy part of it. And um, the notion that this comedy juggernaut uh, is unstoppable and uh, will will be around for quite a while in in all these countries. I mean, I had my first uh, feature that I directed. uh, We were touring with it in in odd places, so I was showing it in Belgrade. And turn on the TV in the hotel room, and there's at 7 o'clock, there's The Simpsons. Not not, uh, dubbed. So my voice... You've been to a couple of festivals mm-hmm. now. How does the, the Gems and Dublin International Film Festival compare? <laughs> it's the best! Was that right? Good answer. <laughs> You'll get your money later. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>